What's up, Sim Racers? This is Larry TGRCM here, and today we're going to do the review of Project Cars 3. In the background, you will see various gameplay and menu systems between VR, uh, menu system gameplays between VR and triple screens, uh, some weather driving and stuff in the background as I talk through this review. So, first up, let's go get on into it. Now, the Project Cars 3 is definitely not a um, next successor of Project Cars 2. They went in a different direction. This is more of a, this is definitely what I would call a simcade. It has simulation aspects to it, but not full-blown sim like Project Cars 2 was. Uh, and with things like tire wear, fuel usage, pit stops, uh, you know, where you got to strategize uh, an endurance race and stuff. Although, you know, I'm sure they did their research and, and found that not a lot of people utilize all that and that's why they would take it out so I could understand that but uh, being the different direction some people are not liking it and some are loving it so I would say all you know just a quick overview if you're someone that likes to play on a game pad uh, you would probably enjoy this game quite a bit it plays really solid on a game play pad uh, and if you're someone entry level into sim racing and you enjoy games like Forza and uh, and uh, well, Forza and GT Sport, then you would like this one. Uh, this game actually plays a lot like, it reminds me very heavily of something like Grid 2019 and, and say Forza 6, as far as uh, how the cars handle and the AI uh, combined with it. So let's get in, and that's a quick little overcap of it. But um, so first up, you see the UI right there. Very snappy system here. The cars are nice front and center. I actually, th I find the UI and menu system refreshing. It's quick to get through the cars and the different classes and stuff. Although some of the cars and some of the classes don't make sense to me, but you know, I digress. And uh, some people argue that, well, they have LMP cars and all these endurance cars in there. So why do you have them? But you know, why do you have them in Forza for that matter? So, you know, it's, it's a mute argument at this point. It's a, a Simcade game. Uh, let you go out there and pick some of your favorite cars to race with and have fun with it. So, um, the nice upfront menu system is, is pretty fun. And once you start modifying your car and changing the stickers and liveries and and uh, those kind of things that you can physically see, uh, you, you have it in your nice looking garage and you kind of admire it a little bit and be like, "Yeah, oh, it's a cool ass car." Especially in VR, it looks really neat in VR the way the menu system is up in your face in that 3d manner and uh seeing your car in the background you know through the menu system so it's pretty neat in vr uh like that particular car you have i have a bunch of stickers and stuff applied to it neat little easter egg is you will find in there and look for them let me know if you found them uh gamer muscles uh logo and chris hayes's logo is in the game so i haven't heard anybody mention it before but yeah they definitely are in the game so that's really cool and congrats to them uh for getting it in there i don't know if they had to pay for get their name in there or or they just got uh graced with having it though but the, either way that's that's pretty cool uh to do so that is somewhat in touch with the community i would say uh so a neat little aspect and easter egg in there uh, for you so Let's get in on, you know, the menu system is what it is. You know, it's 120 cars or 120, yeah, yeah, 120 cars. And I forgot the number of tracks. This is a review, right? And I'm supposed to know all this, right? But I think you've already read it uh, already before. But it has a few new extra tracks that it didn't in Project Cars 2 that are pretty fun. And uh, it dropped some of them, uh, some of the tracks that uh, people liked. Um, so, anyway. And the cars are more, it's a few more cars than it was in Project Cars 2 as well. So uh, the cars are pretty much a carryover from Project Cars 2 uh, as far as that goes. So, you know, if you had some favorite cars in that one, you'll have them in this one as well. But uh, let's get on to the force feedback and physics. So force feedback and physics are actually pretty good in this game for 
you know, if you keep it in perspective of what the game is actually made for. So since it's a more of a Simcade game and it's going to reflect the likes of like Forza franchise or, or Grid 2019 or GT Sport, uh, it's really good. It's actually better than GT Sport, in my opinion, as far as feeling connected to the road. Uh, may not be a simulation based as GT Sport because uh, it's very grippy and rubbered in, uh, but it uh, feels good. Uh, it has a lot of, the, of course, the force feedback, the rumbles over the rumble strips and and, uh, and the road surface itself is, is a lot more pronounced than there were in Project Cars 2. Uh, Project Cars 2 didn't really have any texture feel to me in the road surface, where this one you actually feel it uh, pretty good. And, then, and actually the strips feel good too uh, when you go over those. So I like that. Uh, Quite a bit actually and uh, physics wise the cars kind of do what they're supposed to do uh, when you're slinging them around on the track but it has a very uh, brake oversteer uh, reaction to every car that's out there road cars is even more excessive uh, in the brake oversteer and of course once you get into the GT and the LMP cars are not quite as, as, as happy with hitting the brakes and oversteer but you can pretty much put it in a drift when you hit the brake and then apply some little bit of gas and you can you know spin out like i just did there but uh you can get it into a nice slide and uh and have quite a bit of fun with it with the wheel actually once you kind of get the gist of it all so definitely way better than what you would experience in something like need for speed uh and it really reminded me a lot of forza 6 where i thought that game they just went into catering to people that like drifting and I think that was Forza 6 anyway that did that. And um, But in Forza 7, they kind of honed in the, yeah, it was Forza 6. And then Forza 7, they kind of brought it back down into more of a simulation base where it wasn't such a drifty car. Well, this one's more like Forza 6 in that matter. Grid 2019 really comes to mind as far as it, uh, how everything slides around with thick smoke and stuff. So, uh, But yeah, you feel really, really gripped, really connected to the road. Uh, when you're using something like the AccuForce uh, with the Sim Commander 4 software, I can actually get it to feel very rubbered in, uh, like you're feeling a tire roll over uh, when you're in a slide and stuff in the turn. So it feels amazing almost, you know, and, and with the Sim Commander software. So it's like the AccuForce is made for this game, right? Or, or this game's made, you know, made enough to where you can just bump up the... Uh, the uh, feel that it's it's shooting to you but uh, uh, enhance it a lot more with, with with a direct drive wheel at least with the AccuForce I heard other direct drive wheels weren't quite as good but Sim Commander 4 is really hard to beat in my opinion um, but yeah nice connected feel it's almost like a, even in the rain on Project Cars 2 the rain it felt very slippery not just the hydroplane and stuff hydroplane is toned down in this game uh, but not as bad as like say Forza 7 is. Uh, but the the connection you get in the rain, you can actually drive fairly fast in the rain in this game, which is it's good. It feels more like a street car in that regard where when I got a good set of summer tires on a, on a, on a sports car, I can drive pretty fast in the rain uh, on the street and this one feels that connected. It's almost like you have some uh, um, sticky... Uh, race tires in the rain is, is kind of what it feels like you get some slide stuff you can overpower it especially in the snow and you get into something like this mclaren p1 it's just a, it can be a slip and slide effect when you're in the in the gas but you can actually gradually get through the and ease on the gas and get build some speed without sliding off the road but uh yeah pretty fun actually uh, the way the physics are working in this is in the grip level very confident inspiring definitely entry level type for feedback nothing serious like uh you would have in, in uh in, in other real racing sims so definitely not a you know full-blown simulation so uh but yeah i digress uh force feedback all in all if you like forza you're gonna love this game it actually handles better than forza in my opinion uh off the start it didn't have that silly when you hit the brake, it just starts sliding and it gets this stupid little rumble filling through the wheel uh, of chattering and stuff and just very disconnected feeling. With this one, you actually feel pretty connected to the road, uh, which is, is 
you know, cor correlating with what I've heard from other reviews as well. So, uh, but yeah, I like it, I like it a lot. So graphics, let's get up the graphics real quick. Uh, graphics are definitely a downgrade from Project Cars 2. Project Cars 2 kind of set the bar for graphics. This one is a little bit of a downgrade from that. Everything seems to have like a sheen to it, a little bit of a grayer, duller look, not quite as vibrant as what Project Cars 2 is, especially in the sun transitions and stuff. They look good. It's like the God Rays kind of are toned down a little bit more. And um, nighttime is not nighttime. It's not pitch black like it was in Project Cars 2. Or Forza does it best as far as nighttime. It, and it's like you just turned off your monitor at nighttime in that game. Uh, this one is, is definitely more like you go downtown and you're looking up at the sky and it's it's a lot of uh, light pollution going on. It has that real gray look to it. That's kind of how nighttime looks in this particular one. So uh, not quite as good. And I'm running VA panels as well. So it's not a, uh, I know it's not the, not the panel because the blacks are much better in VAs than they are IPSs. So it's definitely a game. Uh, and also I checked it out on my IPS monitor as well. They're definitely uh, uh, grayer looking. They're not black skies. Um, but yeah, that is the graphics. Tire smoke actually, as far as graphics goes, are actually really thick and, and, uh, and robust looking. So the tire smoke looks badass. But you don't, can't see it in your mirror. So in Project Cars 2, you can see it in your rear view mirror and really enjoy laying some blackies down and, and seeing that tire smoke come off. But this one, you can't see it in your mirror. When I usually gave it a thumbs down for other games like Forza did the same thing, Grid 2019. Grid 2019 has great smoke effects, but you can't see them in the mirror. You have to always be in third person or look back, you know. So this one does the same thing. It dropped that feature, which is a, which is a shame because it really adds to some immersion factor and uh, just fun, right? So uh, it probably was because they were having problems with performance, and that would definitely hit the performance as well. So speaking of performance, let's get on into that. Frame rates definitely hit hit uh, on this particular game. Now I'm running pretty decent high FPS with a single monitor. You know you can easily hit 120 FPS in it with medium settings and stuff. Uh, but mostly I'm running triple monitors on this game or VR. So it, with triples I'm seeing 60 to 120 FPS on medium settings. Not too bad. There's really not much of a difference between medium and high settings uh, in this particular game. They both look just about the same to me. Uh, and I have, you know, uh, old video, older videos, Project Cars 2, how to obtain the, the better, uh, highest FPS you can get for the best graphics, rather, ratio. <laughs> but I'm running a 2080 Ti overclocked, and that's what I'm seeing. So in VR, VR is a shame. It actually, VR looks really good. It runs, you wouldn't know you're dropping frames in VR because you don't really see a frame drop. Uh, on the screens that are really busy uh, with buildings and stuff around it and you have so many cars around you because AI I haven't got to yet but it's, it's not great uh, so you don't really notice the drop frames but you generally run around 40 FPS until you get away from the crowd and then you'll you'll bump up to 80 FPS pretty good but that's with low settings in VR so you know that's a little bit downside but it's funny because the low settings doesn't look that bad like it did in Project Cars 2. So I don't really know what's going on there because the low looked looked good and you don't really see the uh, the uh, watery look in the in the background like you did in Project Cars 2. Of course you do get it every once in a while when you hit the 40 but uh, you're so busy trying to get around all the cars with AI that you don't really look far enough ahead to notice if it does drop to be honest. So. Uh, but yeah, definitely performance did take a hit from Project Cars 2, which I don't understand because it's the same engine. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Uh, let me see, did I cover cover sound? Sounds? Uh, I don't think I covered sounds. Yeah, I didn't cover sounds. So sounds like in the very beginning of this video, they sound really good in third person view. Um, they got some nice snap, crackle, pop to them with the sounds that I'm actually really enjoying in third person but uh in cockpit and helmet cam they're muted sounding so they kind of have a it's not quite as good in the in those particular views so uh, all the cars do distinctively sound different than each other and they all of course handle different than each other so that aspect is still going there 
uh, but the sounds inside the car are not quite as, as robust as what you see in Project Cars 2. Just a little bit muted. Now, however, the rain and snow and all that, that sounds like it did before to me. You know, the thunder when it starts, you know, you know, thunderclap going on out there, you, you get that extra muted sound from it. Now, tire, uh, which is the same. So, tire squealing now, actually. Actually, that sounds a little better in this one than Project Cars 2 to me. Uh, they have a more uh, meaty, robust sound to the tire. Like you're not like you're squealing a little small tire. Like you're you're really barking up a really thick, wide tire, as what it sounds like. So the tire school is actually pretty cool in this game. So, but yeah, all in all, sound wise, a little bit muted for cockpit. Great, uh, pretty good in third person for most of the cars. And I've tried about a hundred of them, uh, or even yeah, over a hundred of these different cars. And so, yeah, yeah, they actually sound pretty good in third person. You will notice in the, in the previews when I went in the field of view setting, they are a little different. When I'm running triples, uh, it messes up the roof cam and bonnet cams. It looks really stretched. But in the cockpit, in the helmet cam, and third person, it's fine. So I don't know what's going on there because Project Cars 2, I run with triples. And it looks fine in any any field of view setting that I go to but in this one that's definitely something messed up in this game for that so I just want to mention that because I know I missed it a while ago so let's get on to AI that's think that's the last but least last but not least so oh my god AI is not good as you can see right here on the screen uh, the collision looks pretty good actually it's not actually uh, as expansive as it was in Project Cars 2 it's not like you're gonna you're gonna um, it takes a lot, in other words, to get some really hardcore damage going on to your car. Um, I haven't actually seen a wheel drop off or anything like that. So, yeah, I haven't done that. That's nothing nowhere close to the damage system in Project Cars 2, which is a shame. But uh, the cars actually do look wrinkled in a more believable way, like you saw on that Challenger right there a while ago. But... Uh, uh, that part looks good. It doesn't look so jaggedy. It looks more like an appropriate wrinkle in, in, in a fender, like you had a head-on collision and, and rippled the fender back. So that looks more believable to me. So I'm not real big on on you know, checking out all the cars and the collisions and stuff, but it's really cool when you lose a wheel and you just see your your A arm there and <laughs> your disc brake drilled out and stuff. You know, just sitting there. So. Uh, speaking of disc brakes, you do still have the, the normal build up and glow of disc brakes in this one. I noticed an AMS2, which uses the same engine, uh, the disc brakes are always lit up red. They don't just glow and, and heat up and then dissipate and as far as the graphics goes of them. Uh, so this one still does retain that feature. So, uh, But yeah, AI is really bad. It's a very big cluster F, you know, when you go through turns one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The first two laps is bad until you get past everybody. I actually had to turn the AI down to the aggressiveness to the lowest setting to have somewhat of a decent race. And then, of course, I tried medium and then worked my way up to high. Uh, now I'm on high settings. I haven't went higher than that, but i uh, just been trying to test too much to really start having a lot of extra fun with it. But, uh, yeah, they they clump up like... like uh, like nobody's business man it's like a big clump of hay mixed in with honey man it's just they're freaking all over the place and you got to barge your way through to get anything so it takes away from the from the actual career mode at that aspect and the biggest problem is, is that they have 26 to 32 cars on track and so that definitely takes a graphical hit because you're trying to render all those freaking cars in one little spot and then you're somewhere downtown or something it makes it even worse or or like this, all these cliffs and stuff all over the place. A lot of graphical stuff going on at one time. But once you start separating from the cars, your FPS will go up, uh, which is good. But yeah, it's it's almost like, it's just like Forza. It reminds me of Forza. It's just a bumper car fest until you get past, past them or they start to stretch out a little bit and then you kind of race them. But it's a shame because Project Cars 2... I had a blast racing the AI in that, you, I mean, especially towards the end of its its life cycle. They really honed in the AI by then, and uh, hopefully they'll do the same on this one as well. But yeah, right now it's just horrible. But 
I could race that game AI and it was better than racing real people most of the time because for one they were respectful and then uh, two they actually had a challenge and they would pass you and stuff this AI seems to definitely have a rubber band effect to them to where they'll come out of nowhere and ram the shit out of me when I'm getting close to the finish line when I know I've already out and maneuvered them and out paced them three corners before the finish line and then one of them comes along out of nowhere to try to win it you know uh so very need for speedish there i don't know what the heck they're doing there but that's definitely bad um uh, but besides all the little wiggles and niggles of this game <laughs> You know, let's rate it real quick. You know, if it's a buy now, pass, or wait for a sale. Obviously, if you're the hardcore sim racer, you've already passed on this game. Uh, and it is a, a hard pass. Uh, hardcore sim racers, I mean, and people that, that just love AMS2, iRace and R-Factor 2, Race Room, those particular sim racing titles out there, which are phenomenal. But, um... Really, who this game is catered for, I believe, is the entry-level sim racer or, or sim, you know, sim cater. I don't know if you want to call them that, but um, person that's just looking to pick up a game and have a lot of fun with it, drifting the cars around. The nice thing about Project Cars 2 and now into 3 is you have a lot of cool cars that you would physically want to drive in real life that you couldn't. And so this game actually still brings you that, but they're easy to drive. So it's a very good entry level um, to mid level, you know, driving physics game that uh, you can have a lot of fun with. You can sling the cars around and drift them if you want to, or try to hold a tight line to be a little bit faster and feel connected to the road, and don't have to worry about tire wear and selecting your your fuel usage or worrying about pitting and then you lost a race so it definitely keeps you more involved in the race like they were advertising but you know obviously with uh some of the uh simulation aspects or a lot of them dropped off but um yeah it's definitely uh if you're a fan of forza then yeah this is a good game for you uh fan of grid 2019 this is a better game for you than grid 2019 for sure but uh a limited career mode definitely not the value you get out of something like GT Sport or Forza 7. They offer for $100 if you get the DLC package on those. Well, for one, GT Sport don't have a DLC package, so it was even a better deal. But uh, and on all the upgrades were free, and all the new contacts were free. So that's the best deal of all, right? But uh, if you don't get along with that game and you like the Forza series, man, that's a way more expensive game for, the, for your dollar uh, to uh, fun ratio, right? This one does, in my opinion, handle better. Uh, the cars handle better, and the cars are actually more fun to drive. And the AI is better, actually, in Forza than it is in this game, even though, uh, even though they are somewhat of a bumper car affair as well, but still better than this one. This, this AI is Grid 2019, and uh, with the uh, limited career mode and the limited liveries and what you can actually do to the car uh, as far as changing out uh, your, your your suspension your tire grip uh, and um, like camshafts and tuning and stuff it's very very limited so nothing expansive like Forza 6 is or Forza 7 for that matter is so I would definitely uh, host this or, or announce this as a wait for sale for the uh, for, for those people that are looking for an, a new fresh game to play because Steam has them on sale all the time and this has gotten so many bad reviews I would imagine that it's probably going to go on sale pre pretty soon anyways but uh, or use my CD keys link down there and go get it for a lot less than the $60 but I would uh, if you're if you're planning on trying it out you know go to Steam buy the $60 game I tried out in a couple hours time and if you don't like it return it and get your money back so that's kind of the best deal to go with uh, you don't have n really nothing to lose in that aspect and then you may be pleasantly surprised like me I'm actually enjoying the game quite a bit even though it has quite a bit of flaws but you know I enjoy just hot lapping and uh, the career mode I'm not really enjoying too much it's just a, a, a smash em up Mario Kart banging around type of game right now but in VR, I could sit in the new 
you know, see a vet and look around at the engine and, and just, you know, some really cool cars you can see in VR and they look really, really good in VR. Just, you know, the FPS is a little bit down. But, uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I think I covered it all. I'll let the rest of the video play out a little bit for you for the rest of the review. You can check it out and I'll turn up the sound on that and just leave it alone. Uh, but until next time, uh, let, uh, well, before I say until next time, leave some comments below if you're enjoying the game or not enjoying the game or, <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever you feel about it, right? So, uh, yeah, leave comments below. Like, dislike share do the whole business there and uh I'll let this play out and then i'll see you on the track i'm out thanks for watching bye